noticing any sounds that you might hear, just to help you relax even further, just let those sounds take you even deeper into a pleasant state of relaxation where anything can happen without disturbing you, without taking away that wonderful tranquility that you're entering into. So that even with your eyes closed, you can see pleasant things happening that you just let, just allow them to act and by allowing them you allow your body to relax deeper and deeper. Many years after my first journey to England, I find myself on a train visiting the man who introduced me to the mysterious world of martial art, hypnosis and shamanic practices. When you look at me, uh, things in your own mind change and your perception of the space between us is physically slightly different, as though it's kind of filling up, as though if you were to stretch your hand out, you could almost feel the space between us. So if I was to move back a micro millimeter, you could feel that, which of course normally you wouldn't feel. You know, if you just let go. I was. I was very nervous because I, I didn't know who I'd be meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I was, uh, it was, it was intriguing actually because he was very late. <laughs> and um, I remember sitting in, the, in his uh, therapy room, seeing his walking stick with a, uh, a, a hoof. Have you seen the walking stick that he has with the, yes. And uh, it was. It made me very curious as to what man would arrive, you know, um, and it, it was. It was a connection to the shaman, like you know. For me, that was very strong. I could see there was a man with some sort of uh, shamanic influence. A shaman can get a transmission of power. The Sufis call it baraka, or this blessing, this power from another person. In some way, um, we have what called the Tibetans call a transmission of mind. That is. The shaman can transfer his mind, his intention, into somebody else. I see him as uh, my village elder. I've been searching for a long time um, for someone that I can respect, 
um, someone that uh, has wisdom and has uh, power, not power in the respect of a you know a business power or it's more of a healing, a, a powerful power. I'm going to give you some simple instructions, and you'll find that if you follow my instruction, I'm on, you'll be able to relax very, very quick. And uh, I'm not going to shout at you because it's out of respect. Okay? Okay. All right. So, sleep and relax. Just sit. And I'm turning your hand, your head round and round. That's wonderful. Round. Just you don't need to do anything. Just let your body go to sleep. But stay strong, standing, just like some animals, like horses, can sleep standing up. You find that you don't need to take any notice. You just let your breathing take you down deeper and deeper with every breath I take. And you notice, even though I take my hand away from your head now, you can just let your head keep getting round and round, just like that, round and round, all the time, round and round. In a moment for you, I'm, I'm going to make a noise like this. Instead of talking, just like that, I'm going to make a noise because I talk so slowly compared to your mind. And when I make that noise, you notice something strange happening. You notice your head goes round and round in the other direction. And I'll explain this in a moment, so pay attention now, I'm going to listen. Round and round and round and round. You might wonder why your head is going round in the other direction. And I'll tell you now, that's a sign that your deep intelligence, your deep mind is listening to me and is agreeing to work with me. Your deep mind is agreeing to work and that's why your head is doing this strange thing. So I put it up like that and there we go and we can relax and just stand deep, getting go deeper and deeper. This is just like a dream world for me. You know, we had to wear Tibetan robes and we went on horseback up to some really perilous uh, kind of place which is well known now. It was called Tiger's Nest. It was actually destroyed in a, some kind of earthquake. And then they rebuilt it. But in those days, it was where a famous guru from India, Padmasambhava, flew to Tibet on the back of a tiger and landed there and then introduced his form of Buddhism, of Vajrayana, into Tibet. And this is like being back in the Middle Ages, this place. It was quite extraordinary. And we went out of the palace into the dirt road, street, and suddenly I heard this screaming and ululating. And I looked and I, believe me, there must have been hundreds, hundreds of wild looking tribesmen. And they really looked wild out there with earrings and daggers and guns charging towards us. And I thought, for Christ, this is it. You know, this, <laughs> this is, you know, they really looked really wild and savage, these people. And Drumpu was just, Standing like this, I thought, well, we've got to run, you know, and he's just... And they came towards, well, literally towards, within a yard of us, charging as fast as they could, screaming. And when they got about a yard away from Trumpa, they all bowed down. And Trumpa very touched each one on the head, you know, and they, that's what they wanted him to touch on the head. Which was totally an eye opener for me because I, I had no awareness of oh, he, that he was regarded as some kind of holy saint out there with tremendous respect, unlike what we behaved towards him in Scotland, which is just like a friend. Um, but it's such a Amazing blessing to be in with Trumpa and to have met these people by virtue of my association with Trumpa, because otherwise I wouldn't have at such a young age also. Uh, Trumpa introduced me and we stayed for a while with in Runtik uh, Monastery, which was a monastery of the Kamapa. Um, and 
he was such a jovial, kind person. And um, he gave me a, a Tibetan name, which I still keep kind of to myself, but it's very precious to me. Well, the difference is um, that this has what you call a much bigger spread. So you don't have to aim quite so, you can shoot very quickly. I'll get it ready for you in just a minute. Cool. Yes? So there, I'll do one, I'll do one. Dan, were you using a gun like this in the Special Forces? Not like this. If you have a good thought or a bad thought, no difference, just let it go. If you have a happy thought or a sad thought, no difference. Just let it go. If you feel comfortable or uncomfortable, just straighten up your spine and continue. And by practicing in this way, your intention to go deeper increases. And as the thoughts come, as they do come, just let them go. <laughs> Knowing that your only intention is to go deeper. Not to be happy, not to be sad. Just to be here now. So I, I became uh, one of the early hippies, you know, and uh, I started taking a lot of drugs, uh, marijuana, and uh, actually every drug you could think of that was interesting I took. Uh, I, I didn't take the drugs that I didn't, wasn't interested in, of course, but, um, and I went to Mexico and I lived with Indians. And I took uh, like things like peyote, you know, have you heard of these cactus and plants? And, uh, uh, and then I went to San Francisco at the time of the flower power and I took a lot of LSD. Um, <laughs> Appearance, uh, superficial appearance. I looked like a very happy kind of hippie, um, indulging in all kinds of wild behavior, wild sexual behavior, and lots of parties. Uh, deep down in my heart, I, I certainly wasn't happy. I felt I was uh, disturbed, unbalanced. I was studying at Cambridge University, um, and this Tibetan Lama turned up, and straight away I went to live with him. And I went to live with this Lama, and uh, I stopped taking drugs completely, uh, complete, uh, completely, by the way. Uh, um, and I started practicing meditation with him. And I've continued to practice meditation uh, since then, for, since I met him about 45 years ago. Uh, it's still uh, very important important in my life uh, to practice. Uh, and of course, uh, after practicing for 45 years, I inevitably, uh, uh, inevitably, um, something, uh, you achieve some understanding of what you're doing.
uh, I say inevitably, I think it very much depends who your teacher is. And stop! In some way, I'm matching your phys phys physique. You see how you're standing. So I'm, I'm trying to match that now, right? As you look one forward, yeah, so similar, right? The other thing that I like to do, if we're talking, it's kind of easy. But if we're not talking, I have to be, I have to watch. So what am I matching now? That's right. So it's very important that I'm breathing with you. Right? It's very important. Right? Uh, so if I'm talking, then I would talk in a way that matches your breathing rhythm. Do you understand me, what I'm saying now? So when I speak, there's a kind of unconscious harmony between us. And you can feel that. Right? Right? Thank you very much. So these are little hints, all right? Uh, you're going to make sure that she watch, make sure she keeps her ball, because you might afterwards have a criticism or a suggestion, right? <laughs> Just like I said, you know, when I work in my office, I said to Nathaniel, you don't think, uh, don't judge people. Whoever comes, you work with them, all right? And you try, you have to get through. You can't say, oh, this person uh, is not acceptable to me. Which, of course, a lot of doctors and psychologists do. They say, I, I won't work with this person, won't work with right? so We're all human beings, and we all have the same needs and requirements as human beings. So if somebody has a problem, then maybe we can help. Eventually, we need to develop some kind of power, right? Uh, the whole point of these exercises, to develop power in your life. You know, you do this technique, you come here for a couple of days, we have insight, we learn things about ourselves, right, that are very useful. But to bring them into our life, we need to practice every day. Otherwise, no chance of responding. You know, somebody comes and pushes your button, you're going to get angry and then feel bad about it. You understand me? But you practice this all the time, then eventually you feel that it's natural. Not because it's some religion, or, or some morally good way to be, but because it's an uh, efficient, efficient way of living and being, being happier. So that you, you can see, uh, to an external observer, it might appear that the person is completely helpless or even asleep, and this is completely not the case. The person is giving up voluntarily their physical self-control so they can focus more deeply on whatever subject it is that's important to them. And this requires a lot of trust and a lot of un uh, rapport, we say, between uh, the two people who are doing the work together. A lot of trust and understanding. And if that trust is accomplished, then the other person can truly let go and just focus on the question. I've been very fortunate to have many wonderful teachers in my life. Uh, some of them were conscious teachers, that means people who knew they were teachers, like Trungpa Rinpoche, or uh, Doshi uh, Nakagawa, or Roshi, my Zen, a uh, man who helped me very much with Zen, um, or uh, Atto Rinpoche, uh, or teachers in the West. Uh, now, all of them, except for uh, the wonderful man Atta Rimshi, are, are now dead, right? And, um, uh, but there's still many other teachers, there are many people who have helped me in my life who would not describe themselves as teachers. Uh, and some of them are people who have caused me... Uh, you, you, might, you might say, caused me a lot of suffering, actually. Um, but they've, in that way, they've helped me very much, and I regard these people as my teachers also. Looking down at the lovely water, and you know you're going to drop that stone. You know how extraordinary it's going to feel. You just want to hold it a bit longer to draw out the pleasure.
And then when you feel ready, you can just lift the stone above your head. You can only hold it for a second or so. And then just let it drop and it drops down. And you feel a wonderful crash into water. And simultaneously, you can feel it going deep, deep down. And simultaneously, you hear it. You can feel, see the ripples extending in every direction. Beautiful ripples of the water. You don't know where they're going to, or who they're going to meet, or who's going to see them. But you can be sure that whoever comes across those ripples is going to feel the same joy that you feel. The most crucial thing for me is uh, is that anything else that I've experienced, I've witnessed and I've gone down and found therapists on Harley Street. I've been searching for a teacher and a master um, for some time. And uh, so I guess I've been dabbling and exploring and looking at lots of uh, practitioners in, in the holistic, alternative, complementary medicine Um and uh, a lot of them feel insincere. They feel um, uh, driven by by money. And a lot of them are very sincere. People believe in what they are doing. And they are doing good. But what I experienced with Dan was very different. Your mind, Amran, functions at this speed so faster than any words I can say. So faster than what I'm talking to you. So I'm going to give you a sign, right, to help you go deeper. And that sign is quite a simple sign, it's just this noise. So I'll do that for you. When I do that for you, it just means you can let go deeper in whatever way you feel is appropriate. To let yourself go. Counting for you now, I'm on one, two, three, and let go. Deeper down, good. Just going to, your legs, weak, no root. Tension going down your legs, feel it going up through your neck. Because there's a big weight on your shoulders pressing you down, your head being pushed down, tensing your teeth. You feel the eyes, tension in your eyes, tension in your eyes. There's just the pain is sort of going up in your head now. Somehow you're feeling this anxiety getting worse and worse. Don't know where it's coming from. Just feel like, is it fear? Is it anger? This bad feeling, you can feel it coming stronger and stronger. It extra feel like only you could get some power in your legs, but there's no power in your legs. We're going to go on for a few more breaths and work the breath. You feel it even hard to breathe, hard to breathe. A couple more breaths and just relax now. Relax. Let that, let that wonderful feeling flood through your body. Just relax through your body. So as you're breathing now, feel it going down through your chest, your chest melting. The breathing so easy, the muscles on your shoulder relaxing. <laughs> feel a feeling like a smile coming on your face, where your face is relaxing so pleasantly. Everything functioning just the way it was designed to do. And the wonderful thing is that your mind was designed to be deep, perceptive. And you're a creature of love when you were born as a baby. You didn't have to do anything. Everybody loved you. And you still are the same Amran who is worthy of love and worthy of giving love. A lovable person. And that's the most precious thing. That feeling of love you can feel in your heart now. And keeping that feeling and knowing that whenever you need to, you can make this sign with your fingers to practice this feeling again. You can practice 10 minutes a day, or certainly whenever you have to for a stressful situation. Keeping your fingers like that, I'm going to touch you on the knee like that in a moment. And when I touch you in the knee, I want you to let your eyes open. And just look at everybody in the room. You see how it feels so different, so clear, so run on, so fresh, enjoy, enjoy that. You can see people and their troubles and their worries and, and their needs and how they all have love in their heart and how really we're all the same. All we want to do is be happy 
and to feel love. Some people are so confused because of what happened in their lives that it has to be difficult for them. Mm. She keeps doing that. It's her hobby. Her hobby. Are we all right, Emma? Uh, so that's something that uh, you can practice in your life, and you have now already developed the skill to do it. I have to touch people. Yeah. I have to throw people. I say, look, this, this cup, this cup, you know, this cup that don't want. <laughs> so, you see, it's very important. I'm probably being already. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not obstructing it. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. if I stand like this, you start, yeah. Yeah, and it's like fear, you know. So, you're yeah. trying to yeah. by yourself, yeah. this cup, this cup, yeah. truck. Yeah. And then the next thing, of course, the thing you want. Don't yeah. put his other yeah. hand. Yeah, so straight away, you go to the. Uh, the like this, punch, move that hand out of the way. This here would come here. Mm -hmm. This should knock him out. Really. Mm -hmm. It really would. <laughs> it would, you know, if he would start, if I hit him hard like this, it would. But I'd take him up close to his ear, stretch, and then bring him into. Uh. And there was another teacher, and I forget who it was, but it made a big impression on me. He said that Zen is not uh, the art of being some esoteric and uh, deep, but it's art of taking an ordinary life where you don't know, I mean, it could be doing anything. It could be a gardener or a bank manager or whatever you need to do. But taking an ordinary life and making it in a truly beautiful work of art. So it has, a, by that we mean in a, to help other people and to bring love into the world. Yeah. And there's that uh, the epitome of Zen, as I understand it, to take an ordinary life, whatever that is, and to take it, turn it into a work of art. And there would be many teachers, uh, and I feel I owe them such a debt of gratitude that I'd like to mention them. Um, uh, Mario Higana is an extremely resourceful teacher of Gojuru and uh, he taught so many wonderful people, including my very dear friend uh, Sheehan George Andrews, who has helped me by his encouragement and loyalty as a friend in a wonderful way. And also, uh, in the terms of Tai Chi, uh, uh, Patrick Kelly is uh, an absolutely extraordinary teacher. In uh, the Far East, uh, one of the techniques I practiced is uh, Tai Chi Chuan, uh, or Kung Fu. And Tai Chi especially was uh, developed by the uh, bodyguard of the Imperial Emperor. Right? Now, it was uh, developed as a fighting art, a very practical art. Uh, to, for bodyguards. Uh, get in touch with the power that Tai Chi offers us. Uh, one has to be uh, deeply relaxed. Uh, and when I say relaxed, of course, I'm not talking about the kind of relaxation we're familiar with in the West, which is going to the movies or reading a book. It's a very deep internal kind of relaxation, which is a, a ichud, a different, completely different quality from uh, the Western idea of relaxation. And 
down he goes, bang. Strike here. Here. And in, in, here. Here, push it down. Here, on it. Keep going. If I, uh, you know, if I need to use force, then uh, it's a very efficient force as well. It's a martial art. It's not a waving your hands about. <coughs> but it's not not a force that I use against somebody. Force <coughs> used with maybe to protect somebody or to protect the environment. And it's the same. Uh, it's a very important. You talk about Tai Chi. It's a very important in, in uh, Israel. Uh, where you have a real problem here, uh, uh, a very severe problem, um, uh, in spite of all the political uh, combinations and difficulties you have here, the, the simple fact is uh, that uh, you are being threatened by a, an aggressive, hostile enemy, surrounded by hostile enemy. and. Uh, uh, one has to somehow find a way of dealing with that in a way which doesn't destroy you, i.e. by becoming angry and uh, hostile yourself. Yeah? You, do you understand? So it's a very clear relationship from what we're doing in daily life. Uh, and that's what they say in uh, Taoism, the way of the warrior. The way of the warrior is not somebody who's afraid to fight at all, but somebody who will not fight unless there's a, a very good reason. And when he does fight, he doesn't fight with any hatred or anger. He just fights to protect what needs to be protected. Right? And that is the idea of a uh, warrior, which is part of this um, training. And part of the training, which strangely enough was uh, given to me by my Tibetan teacher, who is uh, uh, very peaceful, but his, his path of meditation was called the, the warrior's path. You can't do this work unless you have acquired some kind of inner skill. Uh, uh, the inner skill is described in different ways in, in, in Taoist Yoga. Uh, we call it um, Yi, for example, as intention, or uh, a strong ability to uh, focus your mind. In uh, Tibet, we, we use this system of Vajrayana, which uh, uh, is like the way of power. I just call right?
but he's chosen to let himself go, just let everything go. So while I'm talking, he can just relax deeper and deeper with curiosity. I was wondering how deeply he can let himself go. That's right. So, some other people in this room can also feel the same sensation. And that's why I was talking to Yechiel. Yes, it's very easy to, to let go. So, I wonder, Yechiel, if you could do it. Okay. If you can just let go, do it. Okay, so and what is wonderful to see how completely relaxed they are in this situation, uh, which is not, not a usual social situation. Would you say that? <laughs> not usual. And sometimes they might find their minds drifting off to some place they prefer to be, just like a dream. As a deep mind is telling them that. Use these experiences that you have today in a way that can enrich your life and give you the right kind of energy to deal with the normal difficulties that you have to deal with on a day to day basis. Just looking now for somewhere to be so comfortable. Maybe you can stay where you are. Maybe you could go and sit down. Three, just paying attention if you wish or letting your mind wander wherever you want. Four, wondering how deeply you can let go today to go even deeper. Five, knowing that each time you practice this, you go deeper and deeper and quicker and quicker. So each time you practice, you find you relax deeper and quicker. You see the, you see the steel? Wow. A Jap a Jap like a samurai sword. This is from Patrick. This is my father's. Really? Yes. Your father's? Yes. Was he a soldier in the army? No, he was uh, the sheriff of Newcastle. In That's there uh, for, really for, put there for Ruben. I see. What else have we got? There's a gun there. Let me have a look through here. And there were some wonderful things like that, that he had no uh, self-concern. For example, I remember once when he used to be wear his robes before he be shed his robes. And um, we were walking down. Oxford Street for some reason together in London, which is the main street in London. And there was a derelict alcoholic lying in the gutter, literally in the gutter, with the traffic sort of avoiding him. And Drumper, fully robed, lay down, lay down beside him and uh, sort of tapped him on the shoulder, lying down in the road. And the drunk sort of open his eyes <laughs> and you could see he thought he was having a hallucination and this is very impressive to me then because I realized what Trunk was about. He looked at him in the, straight in the eye and said with such earnestness I, c I can't convey it now he said courage, courage, courage and the man <laughs> looked at this Tibetan Lama. This is, of course, in the 60s when you don't have Tibetan Lama. There was no Tibetan Lamas in England, but maybe just two uh, or, or, or something. It was very, very rare. Uh, and uh, who knows what effect that had on his life, this guy. Well, I can only guess. We were on first, first night back here. I happened to have a cold attack for a year. I just needed to meet this. 
And it's quite interesting because um, he wasn't above uh, using shamanic trickery. Uh, but that is just a shorthand way of helping people. For example, uh, when, when uh, anthropologists went to South America, I remember reading when I was a student at Cambridge University studying anthropology, uh, they said this shaman is ridiculous you know because what happened was it was this guy in a terrible state and he was being ostracized by his family and community and he was about to be outcast by his tribe so the shaman said well the problem is the problem that's causing his bad behavior is that a mosquito has got in through his ear and lodged in his brain and that's causing this terrible behavior of his. And uh, the shaman, uh, like conjuring, you know, with very slight hand, sort of did various techniques, put him in a trance, and did a lot of things to him, which uh, I'll speak about later. Uh, but the upshot of it was he sort of clapped him on the head, and took out, and said, there, I got it out, and stamped on the mosquito. And that, and that was it, the guy was cured. Uh, and the anthropologists who were looking at this thought, you know, what a uh, charlatan, you know, what a, what a fraud, what a, you know, what rubbish. Uh, of course, what they didn't uh, report on at that, that time was, uh, uh, the fact was that this guy who was about to be an outcast from his tribe was cured. And he became part of, he became happy part of society again because what they didn't perceive was the shaman behind all this uh, uh, showmanship had done an exquisitely skillful work of dealing with his social peers in such a society and talking to him about his problems and talking to his family about how to deal with them and so forth I won't go into detail and this was just instead of uh, this is totally missing from any kind of psychotherapy you know we, we just talk and then he brought about this thing which had gone straight to his deep mind and and amazed the onlookers and uh, that's a wonderful thing about trance is you need to go through to a person's deep mind if it's just intellectual it's uh, not useful just intellectual and this brought about the cure so the, and i seem to do that as well so, sometimes uh, and it's quite enjoyable. I even did it myself. I mean, the last time I did it, it was a few weeks ago. There is quite an important uh, phrase connected with shamanism, which is the wounded healer. And my experience of this is that only when people have had quite a lot of suffering do they achieve that uh, status of a wounded healer. And uh, it's not some kind of perfect person, but it's a perfect person who's, you could say, suffered quite a lot of pain in his or her life and is able to learn from that and pass on his or her learnings to other people and help them with it. In fact, as I remember sitting in a car with him just before he left, he turned to me and he said, look, I'm really sorry for what I've done to you. And I said to him, what have you done to me? <laughs> and he said, I've caused you a lot of trouble in your life. And I said, look, you know, you've been my friend, you've helped me a lot. Uh, you haven't caused me any trouble, don't apologize. You know, I'm responsible for my own life and uh, you've no reason to apologize to me for anything. 
And in fact, on the contrary, uh, I didn't have time to say this to him, uh, but actually, um, I, I still feel his, uh, can you say in a metaphorical way, I still feel his presence in my life very strongly. Because he gave me experiences uh, meditating with him, uh, Trungpa. We used to meditate together, just him and I, for hours and hours. We used to sit in his room meditating. And um, that was the first real experience of, uh, of mind to mind communication uh, that I had. And the realization that with one's mind, one can affect another person's mind, which was a very powerful, very extraordinary experience. From uh, Trumpa's university in America, he became very successful in America subsequently. And he, he a very nice man, he interviewed me uh, about my time with Trumpa and what I was doing. And I explained that Trumpa had uh, initiated me into the use of trance healing which is what I practice now quite normally. And he asked me what that was, and I was very surprised to know that Trumpa hadn't spoken of it more. So I actually showed him. <coughs> and to my surprise, he, he, this was the first time he'd ever heard of it. And he'd been going around interviewing lots of people who'd been with Trumpa, and this is the first occasion that he'd uh, come across this phenomenon. Um, so that was interesting to me, that for some reason, uh, I, I got this very strong communication from Trumpa, but it doesn't seem to have been something that he uh, generally communicated. Uh, and I'm very, very grateful for that, uh, certainly. But why he uh, didn't disseminate this more, uh, I have no idea, right? Why he didn't teach this generally. Knowing that there are no words to explain what goes on in the depth of your mind, no words that can accurately do justice to that deep intelligence inside you. And what matters is what you feel now in your heart, growing and getting stronger. A wonderful confidence. That connection to the goodness of life, to the power of life, that we call the way in Taoism. 